So it's the Land Rover's six month birthday, so we are going to give it a quick oil service. Um, so I do this religiously every six months or every 6,000 miles. It's actually 6,000 miles this time, which is unusual for me. Um, and the best way to keep a Land Rover alive is to service the poor little thing regularly. So with the Land Rover, I, or with the Defender, I give it a six month service and a 12 month service. Um, and the 12 month service is a continuation of the 6 month service. So I'll show you these steps, and then when we get to the 12 month service, it'll be these steps plus the 12 month uh, service. So let's pop the hood, or pop the bonnet, sorry, I don't know why I said hood, and let's have a look. So the purpose of the 6,000 mile check, or the 6 month check, is basically that to check the car over. That and also to change the oil. Now the oil in all cars it's really important but in, in the TD5 uh, it really does get a good hammering so it cleans the engine, it lubricates the engine, it cools the engine so that's why the oil is so important on these cars and to change every six months is essential so the checks are quite simple um, under the engine bay you've got three main checks you've got the uh, power steering which is right at the front so ooh, shall I just pop the lid off and you can see the max and minimum. So mine's just fine. Screw that back on. You've got the brake and clutch. And again, the maximum and minimum is marked on the side. And again, mine's absolutely fine. It's a little bit lower than maximum, so that's fine. And you've also got the coolant. Now, the coolant uh, is quite uh, difficult to see on mine uh, just because the the bulb has gone so so cloudy so what you can do is just go to the other side give it a good squeeze and as you're squeezing it you see the coolant jump about inside of the reservoir so that will give you a good idea of the cold level of the water and the engine at this point does need to be cold so the next thing now is to take the car for a run uh, just to warm up the oil because we're going to change the oil next and when we do that we do need the engine or the, the oil at least to be um, nice and warm and runny to extract it. So to change the oil I actually use an oil extractor and there's quite a lot of debate on whether uh, these are any good. I, I personally think they're brilliant. Um, not only do I work on Land Rovers which are nice and high, I do a lot of work on my Mini and uh, a few other classics that are quite low and getting under them is just a pain in the backside. So this uh, oil extractor goes right down to the bottom of the sump and I think it's just one of the best things I've ever bought. But what I will do is I'll do a little video uh, for a comparison. I'll extract the oil out of this and I'll also then try and drain it from the, the sump and we'll see what comes out the sump after I've drained it. So I've gone for a good run and uh, the engine's nice and warm so what we'll do is get the dipstick out Get the pipe in, start pumping, and see what we get. So there you go, the siphon's now working, it's now coming out, you can see it slowly coming up. So while that's happening, we'll go around the rest of the car and do the other checks. So if you don't have a extraction, fluid to extraction, um, the sump plug is on the, let's see, on the left hand side of the car, on the sump, uh, as you come from the front of the car, and it's a 70mm uh, bolt which is just there. Um, so heat up the engine like you normally do, unplug that, and oil will probably piss everywhere. So whilst the oil is draining out, uh, that'll give you time to go around each one of the wheels, get underneath the car and have a good look at the brake pipe. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. Get out your torch. And I know we all say we do it, but just have a really good look at the brake pipes. And a good little tip. 
is if you can't get into or underneath the car, is to actually get your iPhone or your smartphone, get the camera and record a video of the of the, the pipes and then watch the video back. So do that on each one of them and yeah, just have a really good look. It's better to find a problem now than when you're on the motorway or on the freeway or uh, down your local road. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is adjust the handbrake. So what we need to do is make sure um, safety first and fun last. So make sure we chock the wheels. So in this case I've chocked the, the back wheels on both sides. And I've also raised up the front, um, just so I can get under with the camera. I don't tend to actually raise the front. Um, the next thing I've done is I've popped in gear. So it's in first gear. So now that we've got the car nice and secure, what we're going to do is just check that the, the handbrake does operate correctly. So I'm going to let it off, Oops. all the way down. And then I'm going to pull it without pushing the button in and see how many clicks it is. So that's five clicks to fully on and what you're really looking for is three clicks to be fully engaged. So this does need an adjustment and that means we need to go underneath the car. So from underneath the car, so we're looking down towards the front of the car now and we're now looking at the left hand, sorry the right hand side of the gearbox and there's two types of handbrake cables, I'm just trying to get it in focus for you. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but there's two types of handbrake cables. One's a cable, the other one's a push rod. Um, so there you go, just about to see it. So push rods are really simple to see and they're quite easy to adjust. The cable, like we have here, is quite difficult. Essentially what you need to do is you need to let the handbrake off and then feel up to behind where the lever is, um, the lever in the inside of the car, and there's a nut. Um, adjust the nut um, behind it. Unfortunately it's focusing on the earth lead. Just, and it's just behind the earth lead so it's going to be difficult. So you do need, it's not easy, you do need to get your arm, arm right up and, uh, and fiddle about and basically turn it clockwise until the handbrake goes fully on and then slacking it off a little bit until you get the perfect three click. Three click to hard. So yeah, good luck with that one. It's not easy on the cable one and I'm not doing a very good job in showing you where it is. So, but it's basically where you can see that nut perfectly in focus. It's just behind there. Okay, so you've done the, the checks underneath, just to check that everything's fine. You've checked the handbrake, you've done the checks on the engine. The oil is now drained. Um, so the next thing to look at is filling the oil back up. So this is what I'm filling up with. Um, so 530 uh, and I use semi, semi thin, synthetic. Um, oil is a whole different video. Uh, everybody's got a different opinion about oil, whether it should be semi or fully synthetic, whether to use 530 or whatever. Basically this is what the manufacturer recommends. So I just go with the manufacturer's recommendation. And in terms of synthetic or um, semi synthetic, comes down to budget. Synthetic is probably more additives, better for your engine, but if you are religiously changing it every six months, some people do it three months, then semi-synthetic semi is absolutely dandy. In terms of quantity, um, if you're not changing the oil filter, it's about 7.2 litres, so you will need well, two of these basically. I tend to buy it by the barrel load. Uh, and just meet it out. Um, if you are also changing the oil filter, which some people do every 6,000 miles, I don't, I do it every 12, then you need another 0.8, so you are talking a full 8 litres. So let's crack on and put the oil back in. So when it comes to filling up with oil, I never ever use the jug that it comes in. I either buy it in bulk or I pop it into um, a little oil jug like this. They're absolutely brilliant for metering the oil so you know exactly how much is going in uh, and also with the flexible tip it just makes it really easy and less messy to fill it up. So let's go on with it and fill it up. Job done. 
So now we can give it a minute, check the dipstick, and it should be spot on. So once you've gone around the car looking at the brakes, checking the condition of the brakes, next have a little look around the engine bay. Check things like the, um, the crankcase hose, that there's no leaks, and just the general pipe work all around the car, and also the steering column. Just have a good nosy about. And if you want to, I don't always do it, you can take off the acoustic cover. Uh, there's only three bolts, I think they're possibly 13 mil. One here, one here, and one on the other side. Um, there is a pipe um, connected, a breather pipe, um, so make sure you disconnect that. Actually, I think that's a fuel pipe, actually. So make sure that's disconnected and out the way. And just have an overall check in the engine bay. So the last thing to do before you take it out on your road test is just have a look at the, um, the door hinges and handles. Um, so I use 3-in-1 um, lithium grease, um, which is a brilliant little product. And just go inside and just give it a little squirt. Let it sit there for a bit and then wipe off the excess once it's done and then I do the same so I let it sit there do its thing give it a wipe and you're good to go if you found this video useful why not click on like so other people can find it and if you want to subscribe I'll be doing lots more videos on VWs and minis and Land Rovers and MGs and lots of other cars and things so yeah Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon. So, going for a good run now. So, going for a good run and the engine's nice and warm. So what we'll do is get the dipstick out, get the pipe in, start pumping and see what we get. So, we've gone for a good run now. Yeah. So, we've gone for a good run and the engine's nice and warm. So what we'll do is get the dipstick out, get the pipe in, start pumping and see what we get.